Hello friends. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Jackery Explorer 160. This is the smallest solar generator that Jackery makes. It's only 167 watt hours with a 100 watt inverter. This is a modified sine wave inverter, but this little, very lightweight buddy is very strong, it's very portable, and it's absolutely great for the applications that you want to use it for. Today we're going to undertake a couple of different tests. We're going to look at a capacity test to see if we can pull full capacity out of this solar generator. We're going to take a look at this 12 volt output right here to make sure that we're getting a regulated 12 volt output that will keep a steady voltage throughout the application life or the battery drain lifetime. We're going to look at these USB outlets and we're going to look at the inverter. So we're going to see exactly what we can do with this Jackery 160. Again, the smallest in the Jackery lineup, but for the price, I really think it's worth it. So as you can see, we've reached 100% on the Jackery. We're going to do this capacity test using the 12 volt DC output. So I'm going to select 12 volt DC so we can pull full capacity out of this battery. We can come over to our voltage meter. We can see our voltage. And then we're going to set this up as a constant current discharge. And then we'll just get that started. We can see the load coming out here. And we can see our output load on the Jackery as well. And we'll see if we can pull that full 11.6 hour um, amp hour current. Alrighty, we are a little over two hours in. We've dropped down to 59%. So I'm noticing that the output here isn't matching our output on the uh, current tester or the capacity tester. So that's very interesting. Um, but otherwise, percentages seem to be falling as we expect. Like I said, we're just over two hours in. Um, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's something really cool. 13.36, that means we've been holding that same voltage this entire time, which means that this Jackery has a um, regulated voltage output for the DC, so that's really neat. We're also at 10.5, so we're very near capacity. We've got another 30 minutes on this test, so I think we're actually going to pull full capacity out of this battery. We still have this not matching output, but I think that's fine. We've got the right output here, and it looks like we're going to have the right capacity too on a 12 volt regulated uh, voltage, which is very exciting. Okay, so here we go. So we cut out six minutes early with a capacity of only 11.3 amp hours. Honestly, I don't think this is too bad. Because we were getting that 13.36 regulated DC output, I think that explains the difference in capacity that we're getting. It was using a buck and boost converter to make sure that that was a smooth DC um, voltage the entire time. So I'm really not mad about the diminished capacity, and I think that it really accounts for why we had such a difference in our capacity. So we fully discharged our Jackery, and now we've plugged it in to 100 watt Rock Pals solar panel. So this is 100 watts, and we have a nice sunny day. So we should be getting full input into the Jackery. But as you can see, we're only getting 32 watts in. Now I know for a fact that this Jackery is hard capped at 42 watts from shore power, but I would expect to see more than 32 watts coming in from a 100 watt panel. Let's hook it up to a bigger array and see if we can get this number to jump. All right, so you guys won't believe this. I've actually swapped out the Jackery to the larger array, so now I'm using a 200 watt Renogy monocrystalline solar panel, or it's actually two 100 watt solar panels in parallel. So it's their monocrystalline foldable panel, and I'm only getting 31 watts into the Jackery. So we've got this connection coming in, the same connection we were using for the Rock, rock Pals, same connector, and that same sunny sky, but now we're only getting 31 watts in. So this charge controller inside the Jackery is not great for solar. Even though we have a much larger panel, we're feeding in actually less solar energy. Okay, 
So now we're using Jackery's power supply to charge the Jackery. Now we know this is rate limited to 42 watts in, so let's see what we can get. So with their AC power supply, we're only seeing 39 watts in, so we're still not getting that maximum rate. This is still better than the solar though. We were only getting a maximum of 32 watts in with the solar panel. So let's see, I've got one more attempt that I want to try. We're going to try charging it directly from another battery and see if we can go DC to DC power and get a stronger result. Okay, so in our final attempt to get the Jackery to reach that 42 watt input, what we're going to do is we've hooked up a DC, a 12 volt marine socket to this Miati 16 amp hour with the iron phosphate battery. Now we're going to use Jackery's car charger. We're going to plug it in here and then we're going to plug it in to our 12 volt DC output. This is a DC to DC transfer from this full battery into the Jackery and there we go. So we can hit our 42. So if you're taking this on a car ride, if you're using it in your RV, and now we drop back down to 41, um, then this is going to be fine. This is probably the best way to charge the Jackery. As you could see through the solar tests, we were only getting 32 watts in, and even through Jackery's own charger, we were only seeing 39 watts in. So DC to DC via the car charging port is definitely going to be the best way to go if you want to charge this Jackery the fastest. So now we're going to be taking a look at the inverter on the Jackery 160 power station. So it's got an AC inverter. You can turn it on with this little button here. And we can see our load. So if we turn on the inverter, we'll see that we get 3 watts. Let's do a little dance first. <laughs> um, but running the inverter in itself is taking 3 watts from the system. And it'll tell us this every time. But let's see where the limitations of this inverter are. We know from Jackery's own material that it says it can do up to 150 watts on a surge and up to 100 watts. Now this is a modified sine wave inverter, so we don't want to do it with anything like heavily motorized, but this is perfect for charging a laptop. So we're going to plug in my laptop here, and we'll see what we'll get up to on that. 33, 42. And let's try and get the maximum drain out of the laptop. So we're actually going to do some activity on it to see if we can get it to kick up the power draw even more. So as you can see, bring in the camera. We are pulling 61 watts from just running the laptop. Now let's see if we can run some more. So I'll turn this off, unplug the laptop, and we're going to grab a power tool. So here we're going to plug in our power tool. We're going to operate that same test. All right, so 45 watts here. So we've got about 60 watts and we've got about 45 watts. What if we run both of those loads at the same time? So I've got a power strip, not really a strip, a splitter, more like. And we're going to plug in our power tool and my laptop simultaneously. We'll see if the Jackery can output that 100 that we're expecting and actually needing to exceed for this test. So we're up to 85, 101. So we're hitting that 100 watt output very steadily. Creeping up and down around that but we're holding on pretty nicely. Now I'm going to increase the usage of the laptop to see if we can really get up to that surge. So I'm going to open up something that's going to use more power on my laptop. I'm going to load a game. I can hear those fans kicking in and we can see the wattage climbing up. So we're already above that 100 that Jack Reese has said it could do as a sustained output. And I would say this test is a success. We're holding over 100 watts output, sustained output. We're holding it for a number of minutes now. Uh, 
I'm going to say well done, Jackery. The first thing I want to talk about is the build quality. The Explorer 160 is lightweight and robust. It's small enough that I can easily fit it in my backpack for use on small trips. The three USB outlets let me charge my camera, my phone, and my Nintendo Switch simultaneously. This makes the Jackery great for road trips and weekend outings. While the 100 watt inverter is too small for devices like CPAP machines, it's great for keeping a laptop or a drone battery charged throughout the weekend off-grid. We were able to pull very near full capacity out of the battery, with a regulated DC output, so this is going to get a pass from me, even though we were just shy at 11.3 instead of 11.6. The Jackery definitely struggles in charging though. With the solar panel, you're looking at 5.5 hours charging time. With Jackery's own AC charger, you're still looking at four and a half hours of charge. Now, if you're using a car charger, it is possible to get that maximum input rate and get your charging down to near four hours. All that said, I'm still not too happy with the charging speed of the Jackery Explorer 160. Overall, I still really like the unit. It does what it's designed to do, and it does it well. All right, friends, I'll see you next time.